The following is a world class bullshitters exclusive. So I saw Black Panther 2 last weekend, and I regret it because it was pretty bad. If you want a full review, check out the short, check out the podcast. But the one thing I wanted to talk about today with Black Panther was something I noticed that is kind of weird, a little troubling, if you will. So Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever is just another Marvel movie. Now, Marvel movies feature superheroes, and superheroes come from all walks of life. And one of the things that differentiates a superhero from another superhero is the costume. Now, Marvel, DC, they have some of the most iconic costumes ever created. When you close your eyes and think comic books, you might think Superman, you might think Spider-Man, you might think Batman. But you're going to think about the costumes. The costumes are part of the character's identity. They represent their fears, they represent their phobias, they represent their failures. But when you're a Marvel movie superhero from Phase 4, your superhero costume reflects your hairstyle. So Riri Williams debuted as Ironheart in Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever, and no one's really talking about it. But the part of the movie I kept thinking about is why. Why does Riri Williams' Ironheart suit have braids built into the helmet? Now folks, most of us have hair. We know what it's like to have to put on a hat, move your hair to the side, adjust things for your hair. It's a common thing that affects men and women. Now when you put on a helmet or something hard, it doesn't really change the shape to reflect your hair. Because... It's a helmet, it's a hat, it's something big. Well, when you're Riri Williams, you've built in the fucking braids in the armor. Why? Well, I don't know if I really want to say it, but fuck it. Marvel loves to present itself as this culturally relevant studio. Yet for some reason, every time they want to make a movie about a minority character, they tend to play into the stereotypes. And Black Panther is no different. Beyond the absentee father trope and shit like that, Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever likes to play into the stereotype that hair is the most important part of the black culture. Now you're thinking to yourself, wow, how do you get that from a helmet? Well, first off, let's take a second. Why are there braids sculpted into a helmet? This was a design choice. They didn't just put a helmet on the actress's head and go, oh shit, we should do something to necessitate that. Nah, it's kind of stupid. It's different from like, I don't know, boob armor or something that you have to put over your body to cover a part that protrudes, but hair? So you're going to sculpt it in? Like, look at the pictures of this helmet. It has fucking braids in it. And this isn't a Wakanda thing. The Black Panther doesn't have braids sculpted into his mask. And that's as black as it comes. Wakandan. Now, this isn't exclusive to Riri Williams, but Riri Williams is just an American stereotype. For everyone out there that wants to talk about the difference between what it means to be Wakandan and what it means to be black in America, well, the difference is there is no Wakanda, so there's no difference to be had. But Wakanda is a fictional place that Marvel likes to act as aspirational, a place where black people in America should be mentally. Well, as somebody who fits in the demographic that they're trying to sell this movie to, I think they're full of shit. Now, Marvel loves to pat itself on the back for getting the Wakandan aspect of this film right, a part that's actually fake, but they like to play into all the black stereotypes here in America, which kind of undoes the whole point of this movie. If Black Panther is supposed to be this big, culturally relevant film, then why do you play into the negative parts? Now, Black Panther should not be a movie about how a culture should live, or how a culture should be. People should just be their own selves. But Marvel puts themselves in this conversation when they want to create entertainment that is looked at as being culturally relevant, at entertainment that helps progress. It doesn't. Black Panther 1, Black Panther 2, any of these movies, they don't really do much but make money for a handful of people. And these people love to pat themselves on the back as these allies for progress and change, but, uh, yeah, you're just guilty of doing the same old shit. These are comic book movies. The fans have certain expectations. The fans have certain desires. It's Marvel that makes all of the choices to make these movies the way they are. And so when something like this silly happens, that's eh, Marvel's fault. I would just love to hear Marvel give me a reason why, well, eh, we sculpted braids into her helmet. Is her suit fueled by orange soda? Like, come on, motherfuckers. This is the shit that pisses me off. We're going to play into some stereotypes, but we're going to act like if people aren't interested in the movie, they're racist. What the fuck is that kind of bullshit? You are not racist if you're not interested in Black Panther 2. You're fucking sane because I sat through that shit. You shouldn't watch that movie. Yeah, I'll go there and say it. And it's not as bad as The Eternals, but it's almost as bad as The Eternals. On the scale of Marvel Phase 4, hold on, let me actually pull up what's in Phase 4. Ah, Phase 4, my old friend, said no one ever. Phase 4 includes shit like WandaVision, which sucked. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, Black Widow, Eternals, Shang-Chi. Hell, I'm done. They all sucked. The only things I liked out of Phase 4 were Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. Maybe it was because of Steve Ditko, maybe because of Sam Raimi, maybe because Tobey Maguire. 
I don't know. Or maybe those movies were slightly better than the other things around them. But Black Panther was not. So the fact that they want to sell you this cultural event of the season, remember, folks, that they're selling you braids and other black stereotypes. Because why? It's a Marvel movie, but it'll sell. You know, this one is not released in Black History Month, but you got braids for days. So, hey, why not play into the stereotypes? And guess what? It's not just Riri Williams who is, uh, God, her name is terrible. Riri? Really? Riri? You're going to go with that? Oh, hey, look, it's Riri Williams. Like, old superheroes have cool names. Bruce Wayne, Tony Stark, Peter Parker, Thor. Those are great names, but Riri Williams? Come on now. Brian Michael Bendis should slap himself in the face for coming up with a name so stupid. And Marvel, the fact that you printed this, I don't know what you're trying to achieve. It's like they'll print anything if it's a minority character to look good, but they don't even take the time to revise or edit it. It almost seems like they don't really care. They just want to look good. But no massive corporation would do that, right? They're the champions of honesty. Now, there are millions of people out there who are watching the film. That's why it broke records of $180 million over the weekend. And they're projecting it to make an additional 72. That's about a 60% drop, but it could always be bigger. Who knows? The original only declined about 45% in its second weekend. As I said earlier, the movies I've seen in the MCU's Phase 4... Most of them were better than Black Panther 2, but none of them were very good. None of them were great. It used to be a thing where this one was good, that one was good, that one was great. Now it's that one. Yeah, I saw that one. That one was, yeah, that was better than the last one. That one's terrible. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Spider-Man was amazing, though. No pun intended. And the TV shows, now yeah, they can just go take a flying leap. I have less interest in Marvel than I do the people that report on Marvel. I find all the praise, the hype, and conversation around the film more interesting than the film itself. But uh, nothing is as interesting as the braids on the top of Riri Williams' helmet. So folks, we're going to end it here today. Three questions. One, did you watch Black Panther? Two, are you touched by it culturally? And three, do you give a shit? I don't, so <laughs> I'd love to hear what you guys have to say below. But yeah, do me a favor. Check out the dreadlocks on her helmet. Why? It's... This is the type of stuff that makes me realize that Disney has not changed. They're not better. They're not more culturally sensitive. All they are is richer. And they do certain things that are just as dumb. And at the end of the day, don't worry about making entertainment sanctimonious like they do. I don't have problems with people in my movies. I just have problems when studios like Disney try to make it uh, an event. That's what it is. Bring back Blade. He can have hair, no hair. Fuck. Give him the flat top. I don't care. But uh, if Blade wears a suit of armor in the sequel, he better have an adamantium flat top. Storm better have, oh God, adamantium hair herself. Like, give her that mohawk in steel. Like, every Marvel character should have a suit of armor and their hair should be covered in steel. Avengers Endgame made a lot of money, but it would have made trillions more if everyone's hair was sculpted into those quantum suits. Iron Man included. You thought Iron Man with Robert Downey Jr. was a big deal? Imagine if he had a fucking metal goatee sculpted into his suit. That would make serious dollars. That would change everything. Come on, guys. How do you not see it? Marvel? Disney? Hello? Wake up. You're leaving money on the table. Just look at the top of Riri Williams' head for inspiration.